Welcome back to another video with us here at LMDN STEM Academy. In this video, we will be working through the June 2018 Unit 1 Paper 2, and we will be doing Question 2, which was a question on rates of reactions. So this question is asking us to state two factors which affect the rate of a reaction. So two factors which affect the rate of a reaction are temperature and surface area. Now, you know, we could have also thrown out our concentration, our pressure, and our catalyst as well. But I've just selected temperature and surface area here. So pick your favorite two, and we're good. All right. So 2B says the data in the table below were obtained for the reaction between hydrogen and nitrogen oxide at 800 degrees Celsius. And here's the reaction. The reaction is that we have two moles of hydrogen gas reacting with two moles of nitrogen oxide gas to form two moles of steam and one mole of nitrogen gas. Okay, so here's the data that they've provided. They've provided us with um, the experiment number. So presumably the person in the lab ran six experiments and they had an initial concentration of hydrogen in mole per dm cube, and these are recorded here. They had an initial concentration of nitrogen oxide in mole per dm cube that they recorded here for each experiment, and they have an initial rate of production of nitrogen. So this is your product. That's what they're measuring to find the rate. So it's the initial rate of production of nitrogen, and that's in mole per dm cube per second, and that's recorded here, okay? So that's just a quick breakdown of the data that we're provided with. So let's see the question now. So the first question in part 2B, part one, says define the reaction rate and do so in terms of the production of nitrogen. So nitrogen, remember, is one of our products. And so if we're defining the reaction rate in terms of that, what we will say is that the reaction rate is the change or an increase in the concentration of nitrogen gas over a specified time, right? So how is that changing over time? And that will give us a rate of the reaction, okay? Because that's one of our products that we're measuring, we're tracking over time to get our rate. So part two says, from the data, determine the order of the reaction with respect to hydrogen, which is one of our reactants, and nitrogen oxide, which is another one of our reactants, okay? So we need to determine order of both of these. So let's go back to the data. Let's look at the data. Now, if I want to figure out the order with respect to any of these species, so let's say, for example, hydrogen, which is one of my reactants here, if I want to figure out the order of the reaction with respect to hydrogen, what I have to do is I have to select two experiments, right? And I have to select two experiments in which the concentration of hydrogen is changing, but my other reactant's concentration is being held constant, right? That's the only way I'll know for sure what effect hydrogen has on my rate. So I pick one where the nitrogen oxide is held constant and my hydrogen is changing. See, I'm changing from one times 10 to the minus three to two here. So that's changing. So that's good, right? So what I need to do, remember what the rate, the order is, you know, it's telling us exactly how, right? From a, from a power standpoint, how the rate is changing as I change the concentration of hydrogen, okay? So let's look at it a bit closely here now. When we look at experiment one and experiment two, we see that the concentration of hydrogen as is effectively doubled. I went from one times 10 to the minus three to two, so I've doubled it, I've times it by two. That's what I did to the concentration of hydrogen. And when I did that while keeping the nitrogen oxide constant, what happened to the rate of production of nitrogen? We see that the rate of production of nitrogen also doubled. And so because whatever I did to the concentration of hydrogen was reflected exactly in the rate, 
we say that that's a first order, right? So that's for the re the reaction is first order with respect to hydrogen. So that means that my power beside hydrogen, if I were writing it in the rate law, I would put a one there beside it. Okay, so it's first order with respect to hydrogen. Now let's look at nitrogen oxide. Okay, so let's just clear that real quick. And let's look at nitrogen oxide now. If I wanted to figure out the rate, right, the po the order with respect to nitrogen oxide, I'd have to look for two experiments in which the concentration of the hydrogen is being held constant, and this is one such one, while the rate of my nitrogen oxide is changing. So this is one, and then I'll look how the rate also responds, right? So while I'm holding hydrogen concentration constant, what happened here is that we have doubled the concentration of nitrogen oxide, so we multiply that by two. What happened to my rate? We went from 0 0.4, 0 0.5 rather, to two. And so that ended up being multiplied by four, right? And so when that happens, when I W, right, when I double my concentration and my rate ends up being quadrupled, we say that that's a second order, right? That second order kinetics. So that means that my rate changes as NO, the concentration of NO is goes to square, goes squared. So my NO, right, I would write a two as my power there because this was found to be second order in, in, in whenever I change the concentration of NO, I doubled it, this became quadruple. So that's NO is raised to the two. That's my order with respect to NO. So let's see what else is being asked here. So we can fill that out here. So for hydrogen, we found that the rate was first order with respect to hydrogen. And with nitrogen oxide, we found that the rate, the um, the rate was second order with respect to nitrogen oxide, okay? So that's our answer. These are our answers here. So moving right along, they're asking us now to write a rate law, write the rate law for the reaction. So here's our reaction now. Remember, these were our reactants. It was hydrogen and NO, and we just formed their orders. So we can put a complete rate law together, and that rate law looks like this, right? The rate is equal to the rate constant times the concentration of H2 raised to the power one because it's first order in H2 times the concentration of NO squared because it's second order with respect to NO, the rate, okay? The rate is second order with respect to um, NO. Okay, so next we have to calculate the value for the rate constant K. So we have to find K stating the appropriate units. We're always going to be, you know, asked to state the appropriate units, right? So here's how we go ahead with that. So we just pick any experiment from our table. There are six experiments there. So I just picked experiment one. Any experiment that you use should be fine because the rate constant won't change, right, for that set of um reactions and that particular reaction. So whichever experiment you want to use, whichever number experiment, you just pick that one. I picked experiment one where the hydrogen concentration was one times 10 to the minus three mole per dm cube. My nitrogen oxide concentration was six times 10 to the minus three. And my rate was three times 10 to the minus three, right? So that's the one that I picked. And so what we have to do now, rearrange our rate law, making K the subject, and that's exactly what I did here. So it ended up being that K is equal to the rate divided by the concentration of H2 to the power one um, times the concentration of NO squared. So I just like plugged in my values from here into that. And in the end, I came up with a value for K of K is equal to 8.3 times 10 to the four. And here are my units, mole to the minus two, dm to the power six, second to the minus one. <clears throat> I'll definitely link a video here or a previous video where you can find out how we determine the units, right? 
So this is what we got for this one. So that's our answer for K with the appropriate units. So let's move on to two part C. Two part C says, part one says, suggest another experimental technique which would be suitable to investigate the rate of reaction between hydrogen and nitrogen oxide. Okay. So in the previous setup, right, in the current setup, what was being measured was the rate of production of nitrogen, right? That's what that data table that we went through just now was in terms of. It was in terms of the production of nitrogen. So one thing that we could do if we needed to do another experimental technique we could measure the change in concentration of steam over time, right? Because that's also a product. So that can give us, give us some insight. If we track that concentration of steam and how that changes over time, that can also provide a rate for us, okay? So that can provide some useful rate information so we could go that route as well, okay? All right. So moving along to part two now, part two says, the investigation of the effect of concentration <clears throat> on the rate of reaction between bromine and methanoic acid in large excess is catalyzed by acid. Outline the experimental steps required. If you're going to do this investigation of the effect of concentration on the rate, what are the experimental steps that you're going to need to take? And so here is our balanced um, equation for that, for that reaction there. We have aqueous bromine, one mole of aqueous bromine, reacting with one mole of aqueous methanoic acid. And that forms two moles of bromide ions in the aqueous phase, two moles of hydrogen ions in the aqueous phase, and a mole of carbon dioxide in the gas phase. So it's very important to take note of what our products are because that will give us some insight into what we can track over time to get a rate, right? So what we can do then is we can change what we would do experimentally, the steps that we would follow, is that if we wanted to figure out how the rate is affected by the concentration of bromine, we, change, we could change the concentration of bromine <clears throat> while holding the concentration of methanoic acid as well as the acid catalyst constant, right? We can only change one thing at a time if we want to figure out order or how that thing affects the rate. So in this first case, I would just change the concentration of bromine, keep everything else constant, and then use a stopwatch or a timer to measure the change in any of these three response variables over a specified time interval. Remember, I was able to come up with my three response variables by looking at my products, right? and see what I what can I possibly track based on what is formed. And these are the three response variables that we could track over time. The first one is the concentration of bromide ions. How is that changing from the T is equal to zero from the beginning to the end? How is that changing and can we track that? Let's track that and use that to give us some insight into the rate and how the rate is, is being affected when I change this concentration. The second thing that we could look at is the electrical conductivity of the H plus ions. Remember, the H plus ions are being formed as the reaction proceeds. So I can measure how that is evolved or how that's changing my electrical conductivity over time. And that would give me a rate as well, okay? The third thing we could look at is the volume of carbon dioxide gas evolved. Whenever we have a gaseous product, if it is the only gaseous product, we can attach a syringe to our reaction vessel and just track how the volume of that gas changes or the volume of gas in that syringe changes over time. And that can also give us useful information about a rate and how that rate is being affected by a change in concentration of one of our reactants. In this case, it was bromine. Okay. You could also do the other thing too, where you keep the bromine concentration constant and then change your methanoic acid concentration while keeping the concentration of the acid catalyst constant as well. And that would that way you'll be able to determine the order of the reaction with respect to methanoic acid, okay? So a similar approach that we did for changing bromine could be applied for changing methanoic acid. But remember, you can only change the concentration of one reactant at a time, one at a time, because that, that way you will know exactly how that reactant affects the rate. 
And so with that, We've come to the end of this question. If you've made it this far, definitely give this video a like, subscribe to this channel, hit the notification bell, share this video with your friend, and definitely stick around. We have a lot more content coming your way. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you in our next video.